morning folks uh, welcome to coffee and revelation on monday uh, if you're watching this we put this out five o'clock every weekday australian time which is about eight o'clock in the morning uk time and depending on where you are in the states it's it's uh, early morning i doubt any of you be up having coffee at that time of day but um you can see here i'm half in sunshine half in shade which is maybe fits where we're at we're in revelation chapter six and we're looking at verse five and six the third horseman of the apocalypse and i was speaking to a good friend today and we were talking about how this is uh so relevant to our culture you know where is god in troubled times we've done a series on that in our own church uh given by john woodhouse looking at some things in kings but this is in Revelation. And remember, again, for understanding Revelation, you need to know the Old Testament. So we'll read this. When the, Lord, when the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come. I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, A kilogram of wheat for a day's wages and three kilograms of barley for a day's wages and do not damage the oil and the wine. Now clearly this third one is speaking about scarcity of food especially and uh, famine and so on. It's very apposite for today because look for example a kilogram of wheat for a day's wages. Wheat is so important for feeding the world and the wheat harvest has been severely disrupted uh, not so much by climate change, actually. Here in Australia, it's a record wheat harvest. But uh, it's been disrupted by war. There are millions of tons of grain sitting in silos or on ships. Ukraine, Ukraine uh, it was is almost like the, it was not just the breadbasket of Russia, it was like the breadbasket of the world, certainly of North Africa as well. And it, it is reckoned that there will be considerable famine because of this. So, but notice this, and I, I, I find this particularly fascinating, because this is talking about inflation, and inflation harms the poor. Do you know when we uh, were going through the COVID thing and our government said, oh, we can deal with this, we can handle this, we can cope with this, we're just going to print money. Well, they didn't factor in that if you print money, it causes inflation, and they didn't factor in that inflation hurts more than ever more than anyone else, the poor. And that's what this is speaking of here. But notice this, this is a fascinating detail that I didn't immediately notice. At the end, do not damage the oil and the wine. Now what's that about? That's saying that the products enjoyed by the wealthy are spared. This is not just speaking about scarce resources, it's speaking about inequality, and not the kind of pathetic inequality that our elites go on about just now, which is all to do with sexuality and so on. It's it's the inequality of the rich and the poor. Uh, I was, my friend David Meredith put up on his uh, Facebook page a very fascinating study which contrasted the 25 most popular worship songs and the Psalms. And in the Psalms there is continual mention of the poor. And not at all or hardly at all in these 25 most popular worship songs. It's, if you're not kind of being all lefty and socialist if you have a concern for the poor you're being biblical here is a picture of the poor they're struggling to eat every day whilst the rich enjoy their luxuries that's the world in which those who first got this letter lived I think it's Nancy Guthrie who points that out many of the believers in the seven churches were marginalized when food was scarce and they would have been at the end of the breadline. And that's so often the case today as well. That's the world we live in. Do you know this? I see the rich talking about how we're, they're going to, yes, we've got to fight this war. And I see the rich and the powerful talking about, this is how we're going to deal with climate change. And I notice this, that virtually all the measures they talk about don't impact them so much as they impact the poor. And that's precisely what this is talking about. When human beings try and deal with these things without justice, and particularly the justice of God, then that's where we end up. The rider with the pair of scales in his hands. Famine? You would have hoped 
that would have disappeared by now in this world that's progressing. No, it hasn't. And the measures we are taking are only adding to it. Where's God in the midst of a time of trouble? As we saw in Revelation 4, he's on the throne. Do remember that. The rider on the black horse doesn't have the final say. The one who is the bread of life has the final say. God bless you and see you tomorrow. Bye.